still looks sexy. It looks sexy. He's going to use his hands. <laughs> Good afternoon, Traeger Nation, and welcome to Traeger Kitchen Live. Ain't just a regular Traeger Kitchen Live, it's all about the game day. So we're gonna talk about game day today. We've got a great menu for you. I'm Chad Ward, I'm one of the hosts today. I'm the uh, director of barbecue marketing here at Traeger and also the owner, co-owner of Whiskey Bent Barbecue. And I got, a, I got a guest with me today, we're gonna have a lot of fun. Man, legend. My name's Chef Jason Fullilove from Los Angeles, California, the owner of Jason George Events. Been with Traeger for about two years now, I'm really excited. We got such a cool show for you today. It's going to be amazing. 
Yeah, so we're gonna kick this thing off with the Trigger Q cocktail. We'll talk about that here in just a minute. Then I'm gonna get down and dirty on these beautiful beef ribs. And then we're gonna flip it over to Jason and he's gonna take all that and turn it into a beautiful quesadilla. Yes. So you're definitely gonna wanna stay tuned. Perfect game day food. So we have this beautiful blue corn quesadilla. I'm gonna show you how to make these hot pickles that we use in all of our restaurants. I'm gonna show you how to make a quesadilla, I'm sorry, a tortilla from scratch. It's really simple, three ingredients and one piece of equipment. You can do it at home, it's so delicious. And we're gonna build these gorgeous uh, quesadillas with Chad's short ribs with the bone in, and it's gonna be amazing. And I do gotta, I gotta brag on you a little bit, old boy. All right. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned for this quesadilla recipe because the inspiration for this is a dish that's gonna be made at the Grammys next yes, year? Yes, yes. So Come on, man. my company's catering the Grammys next year, February 5th. So this is one of the dishes that we're gonna be doing there. So it's gonna be amazing. And, and go ahead and hit, hit Jason up on Instagram, hit him a DM, tell him to bring me on as a sous chef. <laughs> I'll put you on the grill, I told you. I'll put you right on the grill. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're gonna be cooking on the new Timberline XL. Great grill, really, really awesome. Look forward to introducing you to some of the features of this grill today. One of them is going to be that induction cooktop that you're going to get back. Yeah. You're going to do some tortilla work on. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be using the big cut spatula, which I know is one of the favorite accessories out there. I love it. Along with the Traeger rubs. So make sure, keep an eye on those. And uh, let's talk about game day. You know, this year we've always had amazing game day campaigns. If you can't tell by how I'm blinged out from the last two. I need one of those, man. I, I know a guy. You got me? I know okay. a guy. Yes, right. sir. But uh, so we've got an awesome game day planned as far as a campaign goes we're going to start today we launched it and, and obviously with this tkl helping promote it and it's going to go through november we're going to have all kinds of to do's on how do you throw a tailgate how do you host a a stay gate um what are some of the recipes you want to use for game day all those things believe it or not are right at your fingertips awesome. trigger.com slash game day cool i feel like we should start drinking i'm down all right well let's do it yeah. so trigger cue cocktail here we go so this cocktail, we've already got it kind of pre-put together, but let me walk you through it. We've got, we've got our whistle pig whiskey in there for two cocktails. We got a couple of ounces, four ounces. We've got our honey. We've got, we took barbecue sauce and water, combined them together to give it kind of a barbecue-ish flavor. Yeah. And then we took the oranges and the oranges we halved, grilled. And then when you grill fruit, you're gonna get the grill marks but the other beauty of it is you're gonna pull some of that moisture out. So if it's a sweet fruit, it's gonna get a little bit sweeter. If it's tart, it's gonna bring out a little bit more of the tartness. So I, I think that's one of the things when I first came to Traeger that was pretty cool was using the grill for, for cocktails and yeah, garnishes. Absolutely. Is so, this the uh, limited edition Whistle Pig Traeger whiskey? Smokestack, of course, oh, man. Nice. Come to HQ, awesome. you gotta deal with the, oh, the, yeah. the good stuff. I love that stuff. All right, so here we go. So I'm gonna take that. Okay. Obviously guess first, oh boy. Thank you, sir. And then... Uh, can I drink it just like this? Nope. We're going to okay. top that baby off with a little bit of this Hefeweizen from Uinta. If we're going to spike a drink, might as well use the golden Absolutely. spike, right? yeah. Here you go. So I'm going to hand that to you. Thank you, sir. I'm going to open one myself. Just pour it right in. Pour it right in. Oh, I'm going to go Tom Cruise long pour back. Oh! Not that oh. <laughs> Fail. Garnish. Garnish. Boom. And then, uh, look, look at... That's gorgeous. See, this is the difference when a chef does something <laughs> and a barbecue guy does something. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers, my man. That's delicious. That's really good. Yeah, get that in there. Get that stirred up. Yeah, we'll start to show in a minute. Just... Mm -hmm. We're wow. having a moment. That's delicious. I love that. That's nice. All right, I'm going to... Oh, thank you. All right, so... Should have told you earlier, but I'm gonna tell you now, is make sure we got Krista here from our social team. Uh, she's gonna take your question, just get those in chat, and uh, we will knock them out. But now that we got the cocktail going, why don't we talk about these pickles and tortillas, my oh, man? Oh, yes. So, for the pickles, uh, it's basically like a, a quick kimchi or a spicy coleslaw. They're quick pickles. The vegetables can be kind of interchangeable, um, you know. And then after that, we're gonna go into the tortilla. Like I said, the tortilla is very simple, has three ingredients. We're gonna press them right here. We're gonna cook them right on the induction burner that you can get on the new Traeger Timberline XL. And, uh, but first, why don't you show me how to prepare this meat, sir? All right, let's do it. So we are going to trim up these beef ribs. Nice. 
Some big beef ribs. Yes, they are. So here what we've got, a lot of people always ask, you know, what am I asking for at the butcher? What am I looking for at the butcher? Um, it's USD cut 123A. <clears throat> it's the beef short rib. And what I'm looking for is right in here. I'm looking for that marbling. So this fat, we're going to take some of off, but I'm looking at the marbling. I want them as well marbled as possible. That's going to give us all kinds of moisture and great flavor. So I'm just going to take a little bit off the top. And the reason I'm doing this is when this fat gets warm while it cooks, it'll want to let some of the rub slide off. So I'm just gonna get some of this off. And even this fat here, this fat runs deep. So we're not gonna chase it, but we're at least gonna get the top off so that we've got a little better surface for our rub to adhere. Crystal, we got any questions while I, any in yet? Uh, All right. How do people enter to win a flag? Okay, so the question is, how do people enter to win a flag? And I believe if like years in the past, you're gonna jump in there, you're gonna you're gonna do some cooking, you're gonna capture it, you're gonna go to Instagram, Facebook, and you're gonna post that and you're gonna tag uh, Traeger and use the hashtag Traeger Game Day. And that's how you're entered. Now with all the trimmings, are we throwing that away or are we saving it to do something else with it? You know, when I'm at home, I like to save it and then work it back into sausage. You okay. know, if you got wild game, anything like that. Yeah that you can uh, use to add a little fat. Okay. I think that's a great use for it. Yeah. One thing to know too, always when you're trimming beef ribs, this corner here is always gonna be pretty fatty. Don't chase it all because the one thing we wanna do, we're not gonna take the membrane off of this. We kinda want this all to stay together really, really well uh, so it all cooks together. So don't go chasing all this fat down. And then we're just gonna slide under here. You're gonna take off some of that silver? I'm gonna take off some of that okay. silver skin. And that silver skin on these beef ribs, man, is, is pretty, it's pretty chewy. Yeah. Now you wouldn't want to save that and grind it, right? No, okay. you, I would not. Yeah, that one we would just get rid of. And then we'll just do the same here. Take this off a touch. So, Jason, when you're is beef ribs something you, you, a cuisine that you like to, or a cut you like to cook? I love cooking beef ribs. I do these all the time. Um, and you know, in the restaurant, you want to serve the whole bone, just cut yep. one piece off, serve it bone on the plate. Uh, a version you could do with the recipe we're doing today is just serve the beef rib on the bone on the plate with the hot pickles and some tortillas and have people just kind of make tacos on, them own, okay. on their own. Uh, that'd be great. Sounds like a meal to me, yeah. my man. We might have to do that too. Yeah. A couple I... versions of this dish. Absolutely. Why not? Share it with all the folks. Absolutely. All right. We almost got the last of this silver skin off, and then we are going to season up. Now, all the silver skin has to go? Um, I, the harder stuff like this, I like to take off just okay. because. Yeah. You know, that's really kind of like, just like gonna, it's like rope. And and it's going to, to me, on a long cook like this, it's mm -hmm. also going to impact, to me, the smoke flavor that you're going to get okay. off of it. So, clean enough, well enough for me. You happy with that, it looks Chef? gorgeous. All nice. Right. I say that, and then I saw this little fat <laughs> hanging out. There we go. Are we doing anything to the bottom part? The bottom, <coughs> so, on this rib, I leave the membrane on. Okay just to kind of hold it all together. And this yeah, is going to smoke absolutely. so long yeah. that I'm not worried about the smoke not penetrating from the bottom. Right. Cooking with that Traeger Convection, it is going to get all the smoke it wants. Okay. I'm going to move my cocktail out of the seasoning I'll zone. Hold, I'll hold that for you. And then remember, this is a big cut. So let's get in there and let's get this thing seasoned up well. As y'all know, I always like to season the ends because probably going to end up putting this thing on the gram. <laughs> Don't want no naked sides. Yeah, just nice and heavy. I'm not a huge binder person as far as mustards or olive oil, but okay. you can definitely use it. Hot sauce even, right? Yeah, hot sauce you could mm -hmm. use. Yeah, Which, I mean, can, while we're talking hot sauce, mm -hmm. I mean, can we can we leak a little bit? Yeah. You got a little something working, right? Yeah, I mean, you said you're going to hold it for me in your store in Florida. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'm developing a hot sauce. I'm hoping to bring it to market this year called Tumi Coco. It's all natural, no preservatives, no sugar. It uh, has turmeric and it's thickened with coconut oil. 
So it's anti-inflammatory, delicious, really good for you. It works for rubs, marinades, good in cocktails. It's fantastic. I love so it, I'll man. get you a bottle this month. I can't wait. I can't yeah. wait to try it. And I love the fact that, you know, not only can you have something delicious as an ingredient, yeah. but then, you know. The, There's the health aspect as well. Absolutely, yeah. man. That's amazing. All right. So we've got this ready to go. Gorgeous. And uh, what I would usually do at the house is I'll kind of let this sit on the kitchen counter. And I will, um, I'll let this sit on the kitchen counter. And once I see the seasoning and the meat start to make a slurry, that's when it's time for it to go on the grill for me. Okay, great. And we're gonna put it on at 225 Super Smoke on okay. the Timberline. And while I do that, I'm gonna put that on real quick. And we're gonna ask some questions. All right. Or answer some questions. So, so yeah, where can they find beef ribs that size? So the question is, where can you find beef ribs that size? Um, I've been fortunate enough to find them usually at a local butcher. Once again, I would just call around because a lot of times they'll take that, cut it into Korean, you know, short ribs, whatever the case. But I think your most success and, and ability to find them is going to be at a butcher shop. Um, so the question is, is there an easy way to remove the silver skin? And what you can kind of see that I was doing was I was taking the edge of my knife and getting under the silver skin. And then as no one will teach you to do, I was slicing towards myself. Um, so you could probably start here and go away, but I'm a barbecue guy, not a knife skills guy. Um, so what I usually do is I try to get the tip under it, get as much silver skin as I can, and then kind of go with it and try to keep the knife blade up the top of it. So you leave as much red meat behind as possible. I will say removing the silver skin is one of the hardest things you can learn to do. I learned to do it when I was a very young chef cleaning tenderloins. And uh, <laughs> if you make a wrong cut on a tenderloin at a very expensive fine dining restaurant as a young chef, you're gonna have a very tough night. So <laughs> <laughs> you learn really quickly how to do it. But one tip I could give you is like you said, you wanna pull, kind of pull it tight and just let the knife do the work and slide against the silver skin. Don't cut into the meat. Absolutely. Yeah. We got one more. So someone wants smokier beef ribs on the Traeger. I think that's an easy fix. Um, I would just go on earlier. <laughs> yeah. I go to 185 Super Smoke if you've got to grill with it mm -hmm. and just let it go longer. Yeah. You know, because it's going to take on smoke till it hits that 150, 160 mm -hmm. degrees internal. So the longer you're at that time, the better off it'll be. Another thing that people like to do is they'll, they'll take and pull the ribs right out of the fridge onto the grill. If you want more smoke, which once again is going to give you more time in that smoke absorption zone. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, just to add on to that, one thing Please. I've learned, I have this, I've been working on the 780 Pro for a long time, and I'm always trying to get more smoke flavor into it. So like you said, go lower, go at a longer time, and you'll really get that smoke flavor that you're looking for in that nice bark. Awesome. Yeah, and it's going to taste better too. Yes, sir. So before we go into wrapping, can I do my pickles? Oh, I'd love to. Awesome. So Now you're telling me in this pickle, mm -hmm. this whole pickle is going to taste like coleslaw. You know, it tastes like spicy coleslaw. Ooh, all right. All right. So I don't like pickles or coleslaw, but I'm gonna give it a shot, <laughs> old boy. You're gonna like these, I promise. All right. I hope. All right, so here's our ingredients here. We have some shaved cabbage, some garlic, some Napa cabbage, some red Fresno chili, some cucumbers, some carrots, and some sliced red onion. Like I said, the vegetables are kind of interchangeable. One thing that I would always have is probably these four right here. So I definitely have onions, two types of cabbage, garlic, and some type of chili in this and you can do whatever you want in the restaurant. Sometimes we'll even, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll even add fennel, radishes, whatever we have, and uh, we'll make like a five gallon batch and just kind of use it through the week. And it just kind of gets better as the week goes on. I, I did see your, your recipe and you had fennel in there. And <laughs> I, that's, that's, that's what I got chopped on chopped with was fennel. Was fennel? So I'm glad you did. Fennel bought you down? It did. Oh, so I'm man. glad I didn't have to see that again today. All right, no fennel today. <laughs> We're gonna go right into the bowl. Listen, you can whisk all the wet ingredients together like a well-trained chef should be doing, but we're cooking real relaxed today and I'm gonna show you the really easy way to do this. You just wanna get everything into the bowl. Low stress, have all your stuff meased out, which means get all your stuff together in one area, have it all prepped. So you're not making this, you're not cutting everything as you're making it. Cut everything first, measure everything out, get your mixing bowl and then just go. Real simple. Got our carrots here, really nice cut thin carrots. I like the different uh, cuts on this too, right? So you have some square Napa cabbage, you have some shredded red cabbage, you have the circular carrots, you could throw some circular cut uh, radishes in here, like I said, 
we have the red onions that have been shaved. And then right now, I'm just gonna start getting in my wet ingredients. This is a gochujang. This is a fermented Korean chili paste. It's one of my favorite things to cook with. Just get that like that. We have our vinegar here. What you think? Ooh, yeah. Yeah. I did a, a pork shoulder with that on it. Ooh, I'd it. like some of that. Boy, yeah. that heat comes to you there a little bit at the end too. It's just nice. Wake up. All right. So now I'm going to try to mix this with this, but I'm probably just going to end up using my hands, which is fine. I have gloves on. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to go to the gloves now. Just want to get in here and mix this nice. Can you hit me with a little salt, a little pepper? Oh, my man. Yes, sir. Nice. A little more salt. Yeah. There we go. For pickles, we need salt. A little pepper, of course. First time I wrote this recipe out for my staff, I put in way too much black pepper in the recipe. So <laughs> we, got it, we got it down right today. Good deal. And that's pretty much what you're looking for. So if you can see this version I just made, a lot of juice hasn't come out yet. But if you see this one that we made earlier, it has a lot of juice coming out. And that juice is absolutely delicious. So you definitely want to make this and let it sit. You can do it the day before. You could do it a few hours before. I would give it at least four to six hours before you serve this so everything can kind of really marinate and chill. Now, the juices, that's coming out of the cabbages, that's the coming out carrots, of the cabbage, as they the carrots, just... everything. It's just, it's kind of curing everything. Um, so it's going to be really, really nice. All right. You want to wrap or should we make some tortillas? Let's make the tortillas, then All we'll right. wrap. Cool. Awesome. So like I said, tortillas are really, really simple to make. It's really three ingredients. Now, there's other recipes for tortillas for different reasons. There's some that have lard. There's some that have flour. There's some that have cornstarch. If you want to make them a little bit more forgiving, you can actually add cornstarch. Excuse me. You can actually add cornstarch to this recipe I'm going to show you today. About a tablespoon. You don't need much. It's going to help it come together and bind a little bit better. Uh, if you're a little uncomfortable with just the masa and the water, you're having problems with it. And it'll still keep it gluten-free for you. So. That's a good tip. Yeah. Or you, if you don't care about gluten-free, just throw the flour in there. It'll make it really nice and pliable. <laughs> <laughs> also delicious. So we got this beautiful ground blue corn masa. Just going to put that right in there. Now, is that something that you can regularly find, like, pretty easy? or You, you can need... find this at most grocery stores. If you okay. can't find blue masa, you can order it online. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's really easy to find. Just going to mix that or in. Probably like a Mexican food store would have it if you Absolutely. had a good Mexican yeah. market, something like that. Absolutely. Then we just have our water here. Just going to add the water. So this is about a two to one mix. We put together a recipe for this. But really when I make these, I just add water till it comes together and it gets the consistency I want. You want it to feel like cookie dough, right? It should yep. stop being sticky. You see it's still kind of sticky yep. right now. I'm just gonna get this water in here and I'm just gonna keep mixing it. Kind of squeeze it together. Get it all nice and incorporated and happy. Well, it looks great. And, and I think so much too is you know, we were kind of talking about it last night over dinner is, yeah. you know, repetition and, and using recipes and things as a guideline to get your reps in. Yeah. But then once you've and had enough quality reps, right. you kind of start more. It's still a good guideline, but you're right. still more cooking to feel. Yeah, for sure. You know, you're going to be cooking at different altitudes. Yes. <laughs> the weather's going to be different when you cook. All these things are going to affect something like this when you're dealing with, you know, just fresh ground dried corn and water something that simple now you see that ball oh that's beautiful it's not sticking to my hands it's really easy it's nice and pliable and there's still some water left so i might stop right there we're okay. gonna we're gonna try one all right i normally weigh these out to about two ounces each that's gonna give you about a six inch tortilla i'm gonna eyeball it today because i don't have my scale so we're gonna grab our press before i press it i'm gonna throw make sure my cast iron's on nice and hot i'm gonna add a little oil I'm just gonna remove some of the oil. So I don't need too much, right? Nah. Just a nice and little while, surface. Yeah, and while that's getting nice and hot, I'm gonna go ahead and press one. So I have two pieces of parchment paper here that we've pre-cut. We get our nice round bowl. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I, I With the wind blowing, I, I saw you were there ready hand. for me. <laughs> so we're gonna get that right in the center, right? Yes, sir. Gonna put the other one right on top. Give a little mash right in the middle, bam. And try to keep that in the center. And I have this upside down, but that's cool. <laughs> Look at that, easy fix. Give a little press. 
press it this way. Look at that. Oh, that is gorgeous. We got a nice little perfect tortilla there. And how long did that take us? <laughs> not, not even, not, not even, half not even cocktail? five minutes. Yeah. There we go. We're going to get that right onto the plancha. I'm going to grab my awesome Traeger spatula here. And I'm just going to cook this now till it kind of sets. I'm not really looking for color because we're going to cook it again when we make the quesadillas or tacos, whatever we're going to use these for. I can smell it. I'm going to flip it. I got a little color there. That's perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. You think you can make these? What's that? You think you can make these? Oh, I, I, three ingredients? I think I could, man. I think See? I could. You showed me the way. <laughs> Look at that. There you go. Perfect oh, that's tortilla. good. That's good looking tortilla. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and make a bunch of these, and we're going to use these for our quesadillas that we're going to make with your short rib. Yes, sir? Yeah. Awesome. So there we are. We got our tortillas. We got our, our pickles. And now we're going to hit up some questions before we get into these wrap ribs. Uh, for this one, I believe I just use cold water, room temperature water. I like to use warm water sometimes. It's going to kind of help everything hydrate. Again, it's pretty warm outside right now, so we probably didn't need to do that. Uh, I know some recipes will say use warm water. Those are generally more for the ones that have some type of flour or fat in them that help them incorporate better. Good point. Yeah. Uh, where's the best place to find those uh, I normally order it online. Um, you can find it at some Korean grocery stores. If you have a Korean grocery store in your neighborhood, they definitely have one. But a lot of more high-end grocery stores will have it. Whole Foods definitely has gochujang, yep. places like that. Okay. Best pellets to use for achieving a smokier flavor? I, like I would say, you, yeah, you, you've <laughs> got to go into the hardwoods, and yeah. that's going to be like your brisket blend. Mm -hmm. um, you've got you know, mesquite, obviously, out the gate. It's always good. And then I would say, you know, hickory. Mm -hmm. You know, to those, those, those stronger Stay away woods, from the fruit woods. Exactly. Yeah. Much as I like them, like my favorite go-to is like 50-50 cherry pecan. But if yeah. you're looking for that deeper, super smoky flavor, definitely want to go hard with the, the hard sure. ones. Okay, so for big cuts of meat, are there some that you would leave more or less fat on? So I will say with myself, with briskets and butts, Yeah. I usually leave the majority of the fat cap because yeah. I'm cooking both of those fat side down yeah. on the Traeger and over a long cook, you'll have a little bit of radiant heat mm -hmm. come up from the drip pan. So I like to use that fat layer to protect from the radiant heat to the meat that I care about. Yeah. Um, so I don't mind having a little, you know, a little thicker fat cap on brisket or pork butt. That's myself. How about you? Yeah, um, I've seen some some barbecue videos where guys will trim all the fat off of their meats and I just it doesn't make sense to me. But again, I like the fat. I like the smoke with the fat. So I tend to leave a little bit more fat on. And if you feel like it's too much, you can always trim it off afterwards. That's yeah. how I look at it. And, and that's what I do when the brisket's yeah. done or the pork butt's done. As soon as it's rested yeah. and it's time to serve. First thing I do is flip that brisket over and take all the fat off. There you go. And, and you're ready to go. You used it for what you wanted to, which was insurance. Right. Yeah, exactly. All right. So with that being said, all this talk about big cuts of meat, <laughs> let's uh, let's do some wrapping. I mean meat wrapping, not wrapping. All right. I all mean, right. I could. I know you're hanging I'm out sure. with juvenile, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm going to anchor this down for just a sec. And then I'm going to get in here once again with the big cut spatula. Boom. There we nice. go. And, you know, let's talk about this wrapping phase here for a second. So, today I'm showing you a very traditional wrap. Um, this is just a foil wrap with some beef broth. Um, but there's other ways you could go. If you wanted to, you could go, um, you go the route of, of paper. You know, pink paper. Mm -hmm. um, I've never been much of a pink paper guy, but I understand you know why folks use it. But then you've got some pretty interesting yeah. wraps that you've used in the past. I'd love to hear about those. Yeah, I mean, I've used everything from parchment paper to the Traeger peach paper, which I now love. But before I had some peach paper at my house, I would just use several sheets of parchment and kind of wrap them together uh, to make sure not too much liquid was coming out while I was cooking it. Yep. Um, I think that as a, a trained chef, most chefs are trained to protect the food with paper because we're told it has a more natural flavor. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. Um, yeah. But <laughs> I just always tend to lean towards paper. Yeah, and, and so for me, I, so my, the reason I'm such a foil guy is I, like, sir, mm -hmm. 
is I like the fact that, okay, so when we use paper, it's gonna preserve the bark more, right? Because yeah. it can breathe. But at the same time, it's gonna stall a little bit longer. You know, when we get up to that 180, yeah, 190. It's not gonna hold the heat as well. Right, so, right. so I have always went with the foil because I prefer, once it's taken all the smoke it can, yeah. let's get that baby brazed and done and, okay. and not take a chance of drying it out. Right. But I've had dang good beef ribs, brisket wrapped in foil and in butcher paper. And Once you, again, you don't even really have to wrap the beef ribs if you don't want to, right? That's what we were talking about yeah. last night. You know, obviously TKL would have been a little shorter today if we didn't wrap. <laughs> um, but wanted, wanted to, to give show you this, options. but also wanted to tell you with as much fat as there are in mm -hmm. beef ribs, 90% of the time when I cook them at home, mm -hmm. I never wrap them. Okay. Um, and so do as you would like, but these are very, very resilient. They hold up really well. Yeah. Uh, not super lean, a lot of fat in there. Um, so that will obviously give you a lot of assistance in an unwrapped cook. Great. Was All that right. just uh, some beef stock you put in there? Yep, that was just a little bit of beef stock we threw in there. Okay. Um, usually because of the rub and everything, uh, given an opportunity, I'm gonna try to keep it low sodium yeah. as much as possible so we just don't end up with a salt lick yeah. when we're done. But we're gonna throw this baby back on, 225. All right. And now, such a quick TV magic transition. Oh, look at that. On to the finished ribs. So these went on about six this morning and they've been resting uh, about two hours. And we're going to, this is the fun part. Yeah. We Do a little slicing, right? and, slicing and tasting. Now, so, did you change, you change the temperature at all during this cook? Remind me. A lot of times you could stay at 225 the whole time, and that's the okay. way this recipe is. Yeah. But a lot of times when I wrap too, I got no problem pushing to 275. Yeah. And between the foil and the increase in temp, it seems to blow through that stall pretty, pretty okay. quick. All right. It's kind of like Christmas Day. Let's open this present. Yeah. See what we got. Oh. Beautiful. I must have been a good boy. Thank you, Santa. <laughs> Get that out of the way for you. Look at that, man. Nice. I just wear that thing like a necklace, bro. <laughs> like a medallion. Flavor Flav ain't got bling, nothing bling. on that. All right. So let me get my slicer here. And we're just going to do a traditional. If you were at a barbecue restaurant doing your thing. Look at that. Wow. God dang. That so looks tender. It's falling apart. Woo. And see right there, that's why you want that membrane? Yeah. Because look, if we wouldn't have had that membrane there, yeah. this thing would have just cooked right off the bone. Mm -hmm. but dang, that's pretty. That's really nice. Woo. All right, best beef rib you've ever had that you haven't cooked? This? <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you what, uh, I've made some good beef ribs, but Julie and I had the opportunity to go to Ronnie Killen's place in okay. Houston. Oh, man, that is one amazing bite of barbecue, I promise you. Yeah. So uh, one of my friends, Devin, he has a, uh, a company called Grilling for the People. Uh -huh. He made some amazing beef ribs. Really, oh. really great stuff. Love it. All right. And then this one, another one that just, look at that. Nice. Just nice and tender. And on this one, we'll strike this. You mind uh, grabbing that cast iron for me right here? Yeah, gotcha. I'm just all greasy and such. You want the paper or no? Oh, uh, yes, sir. We'll put the paper in the bottom there. And with this one, on this slab, I'm going to do it a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just take, I'll tell you what, you could cut that with a dang butter knife. That's beautiful. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this meat off the bone. Woo. That's hard. Yeah, that was <laughs> difficult. And then I'm going to take I'm gonna trim off the bottom. kind of this fat. Yeah right there and mm -hmm. just clean that out. Put that off to the side. And this is that membrane. We don't want to serve that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get some of that out of there. And then from here, I'm just going to take, cut this baby into some delicious bites. That's beautiful. So as we get our platter set real quick. We'll go with our 
full ribs. Mm -hmm. Nice. Right there. And then we'll bring in our cut beef in here. And finish up this little platter here. So what do, you, do we have any questions, Crystal, while I'm making a plate? So during the cook, did you spritz the beef ribs? You could. Um, I did not. Um, and it still stayed, you know, nice and moist and good looking. Yeah. Um, if you were, I would probably spritz with a, like a low sodium beef broth, mm -hmm. just something to keep it beefy. Um, yeah. I don't like too much sweet with my beef personally. Yeah. Um, sometimes I'll do like a mix of apple cider vinegar and coconut water Ooh, to yeah. get a little sweetness in there. Um, I have a beef rib recipe that I use a little curry spice on, so it really goes well together with the coconut water. That makes sense. Yeah. All right, so what is the total cook time? These were right around 10 hours, 9 to 10 hours. Um, I've taken some lower and made them more like 12 to 13. Um, but I would say if you're budgeting time-wise, beef ribs, that size rack, I would budget 10 to 12. And if you come in a little early, there's nothing wrong with that. You yeah. just want to let them cool down and then just put them in an unlit, or an unlit oven or a dry cooler. <laughs> just say an unlit cooler, which is going to be weird. Sword fight? Yeah. Hold on. All right, what was that? <laughs> so, question was, would you score the fat cap so it renders more easily? I wouldn't on here because you don't really have a hard fat cap, but like the only one I would maybe consider that on is pork butt. Yeah. Um, brisket to me just means too much to try to get too cute with scoring fat caps, yeah. but I've seen it done. Actually, birthday boy Benny over here I've seen him do it plenty of times. <laughs> but by the way, if you haven't, go, go out there and wish Benny a happy birthday. He's over here, stage left. Pork and, and, butts. and he agrees. He's scored pork butts before. I, I've, I've done one or two that way. Mm -hmm. How about yeah, you? I've definitely done it that way, too. Yeah, I've never scored these before. Yeah. You just don't have deep enough of a fact. No, I don't think so either. Yeah. All right. What up? Any others, Krista? So have you ever used plastic wrap? Have I ever used plastic wrap to wrap? Um, only when it's done done. Like if I know I'm gonna hold like a brisket for five or six hours, sometimes I'll take, once it's got out of the foil, mm -hmm. once all the steams came off of it, you can wrap it back with some um, saran wrap yeah. and then foil it or paper it back. Okay. And it just kind of keeps that heat a lot closer, but you definitely want to make sure that that thing's totally done cooking mm -hmm. or else by the time you put that plastic wrap on it now you're just creating a little more heat in it yeah all right i'm gonna finish this platter up okay. right now and then i'm Wonderful. gonna hand you a slab oh yeah and you go get to work on making us some quesadillas beautiful it's almost clock out time for me old oh boy. man come on now oh, hey, i'm gonna be here to help <laughs> i'm gonna be here to help. help me make quesadillas absolutely i will And how many people would this feed? Man. Like normal people. I'll tell you what, if it's not a football team, I think. <laughs> you know, and another thing to remember about beef. two ribs, right? Yeah, th so this is two ribs. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I would say this, because mm. you can't eat a lot of beef Thank rib, you. man. Cheers. I didn't do good on taking the princess bite there. That's insane. It's so good though, so much flavor. Yeah, the, really soft. It's delicious. The seasoning, the smoke, the salt's all mm -hmm. there, but it's not overpowering anything, right? It's yeah. just elevating yep. the protein, which is amazing. And the texture is just amazing. Oh, oh that's, man, you can eat that with dentures. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a denture meal. But I, I think right here, easily, you've got 10, 12 people, protein-wise. Okay. Yeah. Because, I mean, you, you honestly, you have one or two of those cubes, and that's about. It's very filling. It's about right. as far as you can go. It's mm -hmm. just really, really rich. Yeah. All right. Well, while you're cutting some meat for me, I'm gonna get ready to make some quesadillas. Yep, yeah, we'll, we'll take the other one. All right, how do you want this, Chef? Nice and thin? Nice and thin, please. All right, I'm on it for you. I'm gonna use this as kind of my interview for the Grammys, guys. We'll see what he thinks. 
All right. I'm gonna just go ahead and make like, I don't know, four of these. We'll cut them into fours, be a nice amount. So with this recipe, the cheese again is interchangeable. It's kind of whatever you like. Uh, on our recipe at the restaurant we're using, we kind of start with some goat cheese that we smear down and then we build everything else around it. Let me grab some gloves. So today we're using cotilla cheese, which is a Mexican dry hard cheese. It's very salty. Uh, it's kind of like a Parmesan. And then we have just some shredded mozzarella over here. So as always, we're gonna start with some cheese first. Gotta make the glue. How's that for you, chef? That's beautiful. Perfect. And then the next part is the meat. So I'm gonna treat this like the top and the bottom. So I'm doing the uh, bottoms first. Gorgeous. Ooh, ready? Grab some more meat from you. Absolutely, my friend. Lovely. There you go. Thank you, sir. Nice. There we go. Work fast. I like it. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna. Now this is the proper these. meat to cheese to tortilla ratio right here. Yes. You don't want to be stingy with anything. No. <laughs> Can I get well, enough get to me do excited. Right, well, let me get, let me get yeah. this right here. Appreciate you. I'm sorry. I got the, I was doing a little quesadilla. Yeah, it's all mind. good. Now I'm going to add the cotilla next. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. And just keep building these guys up. You can get the whole family involved in making Ooh, cake. Yeah, oh, I can see the get kids a little loving bit more. this, yeah. man. Perfect. And this is so fun. Everybody loves a quesadilla, but this is next level quesadilla work we got going on here. So I'm just going to do that cotilla all across uh -huh. on every one of these guys. I'm going to do a little scallion on the inside. And to kick it up, I'm going to put a little bit of these pickles on the inside as Ooh, well. Oh, I like where this is so going. So you can't escape eating it. So. <laughs> <laughs> It'll get lost in the meat, don't worry. Uh, hey, I'm good and the with cheese. it. It's a nice thin layer. It's really gonna help season everything up. Not that it needs it, but you know. Yep. I like I like my stuff. food to have a lot of flavor to it. For sure. Again, if you could see that, they all look kind of identical, which is good. And then next, of course, we're just gonna add some more cheese. For the last layer, I'm gonna make sure my induction's nice and hot. A little bit more oil. Wipe off the excess as always. Don't need too much because the oil will burn on you before your food cooks. And then we're just gonna top it off. Ooh, yeah. Just That's like good looking quesadilla. Case Press them down a little bit and then get them right onto your plancha. Oh, think, yeah. I think we can get four on here. Don't threaten me with a good time. Let's hey. do it. Look at that. It's all coming together, Chad. And while these guys are cooking, just give them a little press. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. I don't want them to cook too fast, right? Yep. It's probably a little hot. And that's all right. Because here there's a, you're looking for that perfect cheese melt, right? Exactly. Right. Just checking to make sure they're not cooking too fast. If they are, at once I turned it down, I would just flip it over to the cooler side, but they seem to be doing fine. Turn and one it back thing about up. this induction burner too, man, it's so responsive. It, it responds really fast. Yeah, it's great. So induction technology, it will heat this pan instantly when you put it on. It's yes. really great. And if you have not tried reverse searing a steak with the induction burner, then I don't know if you've lived yet. <laughs> it's amazing. It is amazing. We have any more questions? Yeah. So, 
If oh. you don't have beef, ri I know where you're going. I know your first answer. <laughs> so uh, you go first. Yeah, no, I want. <laughs> so if you don't have beef ribs, what's a good uh, substitution? Uh, for this quesadilla recipe. Now, I'm going to let you go first, old folks. I well, know what you're going to lead with. Well, one of my favorite things to do this with is uh, oxtails. I love making these with oxtails with a little curry and with these pickles and everything and the cheese. It's just so amazing, so flavorful. <clears throat> You'll absolutely love it. And oxtails come out great on the Traeger. I do them all the time. I actually have a recipe posted making curried oxtails on my Traeger, on my Instagram page, Chef Fully Love on Instagram. Awesome. Yeah. What about you? Oh, so for me, you know, to, I, I've always been, you know, coming up through comp barbecue, mm -hmm. brisket was the one meat that I wouldn't give away yeah. after a contest. And so I would love making, <laughs> yeah. you know, brisket, brisket, brisket pot pie, brisket quesadillas. Insane. Brisket chili. Yeah. Yep. So question was, when I wrap these beef ribs and put them back on the grill, meat side down or bone side down, on beef ribs, I always cook them bone side down the whole entire time. You subscribe to that too, I Chef? do, yes. Whatever Chad said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you over barbecue. All right, so we're on, we're, on the, we're on the flip right now. Yeah, we're flipping these over. Flippity flip. You can see that. We got a nice little coloration there. I might flip these two or three times, depending. I want to get a nice, even cook. Okay. The meat's kind of thick in there, so I want to make sure everything cooks evenly. Everything melts. Oh, it sounds like I didn't get it thin enough for Chef. Oh, no, 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 no. It's Cue up the boom music. It's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what I wanted. And also, you know, we're doing it right off the grill, too. So the meat's already kind of hot. So it's going to yeah. help melt everything a little bit faster. If you use kind of leftover meat that was yeah. refrigerated, you would go a little bit lower on the plancha, cook everything a little bit longer, and make sure the heat actually really gets in there. That's a really good yeah. point, using something that's warm over something that's coming right out of the fridge. Yeah, absolutely. What else we got, Krista? So on the ribs, how long would you hold them in a cooler? I would say, you know, first again, I, I, I can't preach enough that you've got to, when you pull it off the grill, you've got to let all that steam come off of it. And once you do that and you fold that, that, uh, fold that foil back up over it, I feel like, you know, if you've got a nice dry cooler, you can hold them anywhere from four to six hours. Okay. You're just trying to keep them above, you've got to keep them above that 140 uh, danger zone where we don't want consuming, people consuming food under that. Mm -hmm. So always keep that in mind. Yep, absolutely. Cooler is a good way to go. Yeah. yeah. yeah and, and I've always heard people too, they're like, well, I don't want to buy an insulated cooler. It's like, okay, well, your oven's insulated. <laughs> there you just, go. Just don't turn it on. Just let it rest in yeah. there. But I, I think a cooler is easier because cooler's out with you by the grill. Right. Um, if I do let them sit in a cooler for four to six hours, I'll do what I call burp the cooler about every 90 minutes. Let the Which is just open the cooler up, uh -huh. let all the steam come out, you know, minute or two, close it right back. And the importance of resting it in the cooler is you want everything, all the meat, the juices to kind of calm down, right? Yes. Like all the elastic and collagen to settle in so you yeah. can slice it nice. Because if not, if you don't do that and let it rest and you just, man, we got to eat, let's go. And you pull it out, you put it on that cutting board and you slice it. It looks like the, a swimming pool. Like all the juices just go everywhere in the middle. And those juices would have retained in the meat if you just let it rest. So have a cracker, have a pack of crackers and let it rest. <laughs> Patience. Yes. Patience. Some say it's a virtue. Yeah. Huh, who, who am I to say, Jason? Right. All right. So we got like another minute on these guys, and then Ooh, we'll Oh, I didn't, no, no, no! Show them that again. <laughs> Show them that cheese and full. You see that? Hit. Look at that. <laughs> it's gorgeous. One more minute. I love it. All right. And one more question. Another question. Yeah. Uh, any advice for someone who's trying to cook barbacoa? Mm. Any advice advice for someone that's trying to cook barbacoa? I'm going to let you take this one. Oh, thanks, Jason. <laughs> um, you know, so I've tried the barbecue. First off, got to give a shout out to my boy, Matt Pittman. He's got a great barbacoa recipe. Go check it out. First of all, what is barbacoa? So it is usually it's shredded beef out of mm -hmm. the cheek. Okay. Um, and one thing about the cheek is, I mean, it's super tender. Cheek meat yeah. and this remind me a lot together yeah. of the tenderness of it. Mm -hmm. The problem and is, yeah, and oxtails. Yeah. But the, the problem with cheap meat is you got to clean it up really well. Right. A little gristle in there. So Matt's got a good video, shows you how to clean up beef cheeks. And then at that point, you're really smoking them and then braising them. Um, and when, you know, when I think flavors and rubs and seasonings, definitely going more spicy, 
Mexican, you know, that feel than like traditional barbecue. Um, but once you get those things braised and they're, and they're, they're tender and that thermopin goes right in them, they're done, let them rest, shred them, even put them back in with some of the braising liquid um, for a minute and then serve. I think they're delicious. Oh, but I'll tell you what else I think is delicious. Yeah. <laughs> They're coming right, off so it. They're looking good. We're taking these guys off right now. We got a little crispy cheese on the edge. That's uh -huh. exactly what I'm looking for. Everything's melted up nice on the inside. Love it. And we're just going to plate these up. Woo! My spatula away. Grab my knife. All right. Actually, I'm going to plate. You're going to plate. All right. Plate on wood. How about that? I love it. All right, so I'm just going to cut these into fours. Boom. Oh, dropped one. That's all it's right. It's all right. Sorry, camera crew, too. Y'all ain't eating today. <laughs> Sorry to my shoes, but it's all right. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that looks so good. That's a professional quesadilla right there. I'm showing resistance right now. I hope you <laughs> And know. anybody can make this, so. Look at that. That's what I love about the recipes you know we feature on TKL is, mm -hmm. you know, it's all things that are super approachable, super easy to cook, and uh, and then you can just enjoy and share yeah. with your friends and family. And they just what look Traeger's all about. Absolutely amazing. I'm gonna do a little garnish here real quick. Okay. You know, wouldn't be me without that. A little rough chopped cilantro. See, there's a difference between pitmaster and chef. <laughs> you look here at my just little hunk, scallion. My, my, I, I got my whole you know just. Mountain O meat. <laughs> well, my boy Jason here has got the quesadilla, all the color, rough cut cilantro, little green onion. Now get a little bit more of this uh, pickle right in the oh. middle. Get some of that liquid off. Love it. Look at that. Scallions right on top. Woo. And that's the whole deal. Dang. Let's look at this meal for a second. Slide that, woo, a couple of cocktails. Look at this, look at here. Oh. I just can't stop. Power move. Here we go. Little lines. <laughs> Come on now. I love it. Wow, right. that, is, uh, that is gorgeous. Why don't you tuck your cocktail in there too so it doesn't look like yeah, you're drinking along, yeah. old boy. <laughs> Man, I gotta catch up, hold on a sec. Man, this is good. That is good, refreshing on a nice hot summer day. Absolutely. Fuck. I mean, it's football season. Maybe we're technically in the fall now. Yeah. We'll call it fall. It's still hot though. It, 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 it is a little, <laughs> little steamy out here. Yeah. But man, that is one good looking dish. We gotta, you so know what, can, can we cut one off? Of yeah, here? That's yeah, just yeah. too pretty. I can't go digging into there, man. I, you wanna split this one? You know, yes, sir. Go halvesies. There you go, sir, for Thank you. Thank you, my man. And for me. Hey, if I'm gonna do it, hold on. I'm oh, gonna you go gotta for the do whole, it. You know what, I'm gonna do some too. I'm gonna go for the whole experience, man. You got to. I mean, I there's some it. in there already, so. Yeah, but we'll double I'm down. I'm going to get mine with a little lime. Yeah, that ain't a bad idea either. Yeah. Sorry, guys. We're just eating over here. Hope y'all enjoy mind watching us. this. Yeah. Mm, yes, All sir. All right. Cheers. Cheers, Ooh. my man. I was so excited before the bite, I actually <laughs> snorted a little bit. <laughs> Damn, that's good. Wow. A little heat. Fresh. And, and you know what? Once again... Mm. Everything in that quesadilla, I still feel like the beef's the star. You taste the beef. And everything mm -hmm. else is just so much elevation that. It just adds to it. Hey, Mom, I eat pickles now. It's amazing. These, these are really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it does not. That is delicious. Oh, so good. All right. We got to get back to hosting the show. Okay. A moment. So good. All right. So. We've tasted everything. Mm -hmm. We're going to go down. One last shot for questions. Oh, wow. What is your proudest moment of being a part of the Traeger Hood so, for, so far? I'll take that one. Please. I'll start. This is probably my proudest moment. This is one of the coolest Traeger Kitchen lives I've ever done. This man's a legend. I'm happy to be cooking with him. And this came out great. So. <laughs> Dang, well, that's hard to follow up. <laughs> um, I don't know if there's one moment. I mean, if you look at it, like, the eight years I've been with the brand, like, I've gotten the opportunity to meet 
and cook for like so many amazing yeah. people and develop so many friendships that I feel like just picking one would be really, really hard to do. Yeah. But you know, it's just an amazing brand. I mean, it's changed my life and um, just so happy to be a part of it. But if I start listing out memories and people call me a name dropper, so I'm not gonna do that, but it, it's just been an amazing night. ride. And, <laughs> Oh, that's too funny. But no, it's been an amazing ride and things like this, you know, being able to to bring in another chef, totally different background, mm -hmm. you know, you know, I remember I enjoyed when I interviewed you after your TKL yeah. on the nightcap the we used to do. One, yeah. And that was yeah. one of my favorite things. I loved the I would like to say besides the production folks back here, I've been involved in more TKLs than really anybody else because I always got to interview people afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know, and I love that because you know, we had the Traeger Hood, the Traeger Nation there, we've got whoever cooked. Yeah recapping the dish and just getting to know each other. Yeah. Um, to me, that's been some of the finest memories. Mm -hmm. Can you cook a beef shank like you can cook a beef rib? It's a little more lean, right? A little that's tougher. what I think, and it's, th yeah, yeah, a shank. I think you kind of have to wrap that one. You have to wrap that one, yeah. and I think you definitely want some braising liquid in it. Yeah. Would be the two different ones for it's me. It's going to have much more of a roast beef texture. Yeah. Yeah, that, that shank, it's still going to be rich, still going to have good oh, yeah. beef flavor, mm -hmm. but you do not want to dry it out. Yeah, definitely not. What kind of knives do we use? I'll let you go first, Jason. Yeah, so I use mostly Japanese knives. Um, I have a friend, I have two friends in LA that I get most of my knives from. One is uh, Japanese Knife Imports. John, all the chefs work with him. Um, and then I have another friend named Bomp. Uh, he's actually on Instagram. It's just Bomp Knives, B-O-M-P Knives. Um, and he makes some great stuff. He does everything by hand. It's just him. He doesn't use cutouts. I have like five of his knives right now. So that's like an investment too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like having one of his knives, like yeah. handmade, one yeah, on one. Like, great. That's dope. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm Team Measurmeister. I love mm -hmm. Kirsten and the family over there. Try great and story. True. Yeah. And, and and they just they make a great knife at a good price. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's something if I, I I've only ever had a problem with a knife with them once, and it was resolved in like yeah I don't know an hour. <laughs> you know I mean. <laughs> They're, they're just great. They, um, they're good to the barbecue community. They, they, they love us cooks and uh, take good care of us. So I use Mesermeister and um, I really enjoy it. I feel like it's a great, for sure. good bang for your buck. Yeah. Awesome. A lot of people ask me if, you know, there's a chance you guys can talk to me about the ship it out. Oh, <laughs> so <laughs> people, people are wanting to know if me and Jason can pack this up and get it to you. I'll tell you what, for the right price. Yeah. And let's get that vacuum see they're going over. Oh, <laughs> we got to go. But uh, but no, but it is, but literally, it's very simple. These are two of the simplest recipes. I feel like this is what you should be knocking out Saturday before first kickoff. Yeah. You know, you'll absolutely love it. And the good thing about this is, you're gonna have enough beef rib. You can do beef rib or the quesadilla mm -hmm. on Saturday. Then enough ribs left over to do something totally different on you Sunday. Can do tacos with pickles. All right. Oh, we yeah. got fresh drinks. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Oh, these are colder. <laughs> like it. Ooh, yes, sir. Salute. Salute. Oh, yes. What else? Last question. All right, so college football kicks off this weekend. Trigger game day is kicking off this weekend. What is our plans? I'm going to lead with you, Chef. <laughs> uh, I got a whiskey tasting with my friend Robin at uh, their house. We're going to taste some really good whiskeys on Saturday. And then we're just going to have some friends over on Sunday and just kind of hang out. All right, well, for me... Julie and I are on the first flight out in the morning, heading to Tampa. Nice. From there, we are heading to what I like to call God's country or title town, Gainesville, for the uh, Gator Utah game. So uh, we've got another one of our social team members going down there with us tomorrow, Matt. So stay tuned uh, over on the Traeger Instagram. Check it out, and we'll be posting live from uh, Florida Field, the Florida Utah Utes game. And then Sunday, we will come back through Orlando. And go see my buddy Michael Ray play a little concert. Nice. So a good week. All right. Well, that is all the questions. And we're actually a couple minutes early. So yeah. good on us, old boy. Yes. But Bro's I want to thank here. you guys so much for tuning in today. It's always a blast to do these. I uh, appreciate all the interaction, all the questions. Uh, Traeger Game Day is kicked off. You want to get in there. You want to participate. You can go to the website, traeger.com, slash recipes for recipes or slash game day. For all the game day tips and eats, we've got the new flags coming out. You want to participate. The prizes are awesome. Don't forget about the great products we use today, Timberline XL, Big Cut Spatula, 
prime rib rub, all major components of making this cook so awesome. Mm -hmm. um, anything you want to say, Chef? That's it. Give me your Instagram. Oh, my Instagram is uh, Whiskey Bent BBQ. You can catch me there. Insta, TikTok, MySpace, and Facebook. Cool. Mine is uh, Chef Fully Love, C H E F F U L L I L O V E. Follow me on there. If you try this recipe out, message me. Let me know how it comes out. If you have any questions, I'm here to help. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Make sure, once again, stay tuned on Instagram, Traeger Grills. And uh, until next time, y'all take care. Have an amazing weekend. Thank you.